Welcome back to You Missed It. This is uh, Zach, of course, and I'm here with the gang. And today we're about to get festive. Ain't that right? We're getting festive today with a movie that brings joy to all the children and shows children <laughs> giving joy. Yes, of course, we're talking about Black Christmas. <laughs> it's Even not though a kid's everybody's movie. white. <laughs> no, no, I did see uh, to um, at the school when the dad's waiting. Mm. Yeah. Oh, actually, watching. you're right. Yeah. yeah, okay, but that's like they were like they just walked into the movie yeah, by yeah. accident. Yeah, that, <laughs> like yeah. they were they were not they were at the movie. They were going to school. So this is a very know? white Christmas. It is a very but you white. Can't Christmas. call it white Christmas. No, you can't because yeah. you know Bing Crosby, right? Yeah. Isn't that white Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. So he would be pissed. He'd be like, "You better add my voice." So, in here. so they could have just called it mostly white Christmas. Cause they could have called it all white Christmas. Let's be all fair. All white Christmas. <laughs> they could have yeah. straight up called or, it or white and black red Christmas. Christmas. Or just yeah, 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 yeah. All red these Christmas. Whiteies be dying. There you go. Shit. I like red Christmas. That's good. I like <laughs> that. But anyways, uh, oh, and I should note it's 1974 Black Christmas. It's not the fucking 2006 remake. Yeah. Ooh, oh yes, an important really distinction. <laughs> um, even though I will say that uh, Phil, the character Phil from this movie, she actually is the only recurring character in the remake. She's the uh, the head of the house oh. or whatever yeah the house mother in the remake yeah in the remake does she have uh booze hidden in books <laughs> as well she has other problems she does other problems that whole movie the remake it's just bad just, it's so it's, different too it's bad it's different it's it's just terrible they try to yeah they try to do something a little different but it's just bad but anyway let's not talk about that movie <laughs> yeah we <laughs> spend the rest of the time talking about just that all i'm gonna say is all i'm gonna say <laughs> is cookies that's all i'm gonna say is just cookies cookies yeah but anyways, uh, yeah. Another before... uh, callback to another Christmas classic, uh, Jingle All the Way. Cookies, sure. right? Put the cookie down. Put, Put the cookie, cookie down. <laughs> um, but before... That's my before, uh... <laughs> <laughs> The best sound bites for Arnold. So. <laughs> but before I get into this movie, we should probably tell y'all about our social media. And we got our social media boy over here, Jack. Uh, that's me, yes. So yeah, if you want to follow us and uh, see what we're uh, up to, if you have any recommendations, uh, please give us a shout out on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. Um, you can find us on Twitter on at YMI underscore podcast, and you can just look us up, uh, you missed it, on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and you'll find us. Carry on, Zach. Cool. So, uh, yeah, this movie was directed by Bob Clark, and this was pretty much in his heyday. I mean, he had already made, you know, The Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things, and uh, also uh, Death Dream. With Death Death Dream is actually fantastic, and I'd love to actually play that on the show, too. I think that's very underrated. Um, one, one of my favorite Vietnam movies, for sure. Um, but it's like a horror movie, so it's kind of cool. Um, and then he did Black Christmas, which, of course, where we're at now um and it's you know it, it did fairly good at the box office it did make a profit and things like that but it it wasn't at the time it wasn't critically received it would get it was one of those movies where it'd get the uh critical praise later on mm -hmm. um i guess kind of like movies like 2001 and stuff like that where they were kind of hated when they came out and then they kind of got love later on that's a recurring theme with a lot of great movies is that they weren't they were you know mixed reviews and then later on they started to see the genius of it so yeah, yeah exactly like, like the room you know exactly. yeah like yeah. the room no, 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 like uh, uh, let society uh, catch mystery up. Yeah. or whatever the head of its time ed wood's oh yeah classic uh, plan nine from our space there you go thank you <laughs> just ages like a fine wine just, yeah man but also of course uh 2001 you know has a connection to this movie because obviously yeah. kier dulia or whatever however you say his name um, he's uh you know, main character in that I movie. While we were watching the movie, I couldn't find a moment to say like, "I'm sorry, I can't do that." Dude. Yeah, <laughs> I, couldn't find, I couldn't find any moment to do it. And I was like, "Damn it!" But yeah, I mean, obviously, this movie also stars John Saxon, Margot Kidder, Olivia Hussey. Like, it's got actually a pretty notable cast. Um, you know, throughout it, like if you check out each person, then you could, they have notable projects under mm -hmm. their belt, right? And yeah, so Black Christmas, it's basically about this sorority house bunch of girls live there and uh there's this bad man this bad man decides you know what i'm gonna kill and he gets up in the attic and starts uh starts making calls now 
calls is one thing, but this guy is a little loopy. And when he calls, he's like almost like three different people, and he's making creepy noises and saying saying different things. Yeah. And it kind of starts from there, and then people keep dying and dying and dying. And I should also note, too, that I actually love this movie. This is actually one of my favorite movies of all time, like, period. Um, a lot of people also note this as kind of the first movie where all the slasher kind of components came together. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you can say there's movies like Psycho and Peeping Tom and all that that kind of, I guess, was, like, kind of starting different things. But this was the first one where it kind of put the components that lead to, like, Halloween, Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. and all that going forward. Not to mention all the holiday horror thing in general. Yeah. This also predated um, Texas Chainsaw uh, by like a yeah. month. By like a month. It, it, was, it was so close. Yeah. yeah. And it's... Texas Chainsaw is also one of those movies that kind of been like the predecessor of slasher genre. Sure. So yeah. So those two movies came out around the same year. I just, I like I said, a month apart. Yeah. So. It was, no, it was, it was definitely, yeah, like same year, pretty much same time kind of thing, right? Um, but yeah, really great movie. I got a lot to say, but I kind of want to hear what everybody else has to say first, and then I'll chime in with different things. So, Andrew's on my left, and I know you love the cops in this movie, but I want to hear <laughs> what else you had to uh, say about this movie. Sergeant yeah. Doofy reporting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was uh, beyond Nolan levels of stupid cops. <laughs> <laughs> is uh <laughs> hollywood at its finest um man they really hate cops in hollywood mm-hmm. um but no i i mean um yeah it was kind of interesting i got that halloween feel from that intro i, I like immediately i was mm-hmm. like oh this feels like like i i immediately questioned did this come before or after right well, like, it's interesting was, you I, say that <laughs> but i'll get to that in a second but it was yeah it was so crazy so uh i dug that because it did feel uh unique i like the fact that uh you kind of get to hang out with the uh with the killer in a way it's kind of unsettling and you you know you get to hear all his craziness all his crazy uh like quirks in a way like his psychotic uh like his psychotic mutterings and things like that it was uh it's a little unnerving um so that that's that was really unique or i i found that that was unique because you don't really see that anymore like i've never seen something like that lately like not that not that i can nothing in recent memory uh i can think of something that is like that but uh yeah so i I really enjoyed uh the movie i i like the way that they handled uh the perspective of the serial killer in terms of the uh supporting characters around they were they weren't annoying in a way that uh, a lot of horror movie uh horror movie characters are where they're just i mean they're just, you kind of want them to die but this one <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah honestly you're like oh just shut up already mm. oh thank god you know yeah. like and i i i at first i gotta be honest like when this mm. movie started i was like oh this is gonna be like that just a little mm. bit because like these characters were just they just seem so unlikable at first oh, okay i kind of got that idea like oh they're just like they all suck and the funny thing is they they kill off the one that uh, the, f- the first one they kill off is actually like the probably the most bearable at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's the one that you think is going to make it to the end. And then yeah, she's and they're the like, first no, to go. right away. <laughs> Just no time. This no is like, time wasted. This you thought. You thought. <laughs> you thought. Um, but like, yeah, so but, the, you know, they, they eventually grow on you. And you ca- I, I dug that. I, I really like that they they kind of try. Uh, even though it, it wasn't like a uh, a major attempt at misdirection, but they did try to kind of misdirect you to think, oh, oh maybe it's her, uh, like what ended up being pretty much the last one standing. Mm. Uh, maybe it's her boyfriend, you know, because they have this conflict. So, you know, you're always kind of wondering. Uh, it, they, they do a re- yeah, they do a really good job of, of making these characters uh a lot more bearable and and you know more interesting as time goes on so i appreciated that too um yeah i i think it's it's hard to put my finger on on what i what i thought just because coming into this it does feel uh because it came first it does feel like it's been um it's been referenced a lot since then so i feel like i've seen stuff like this 
a l- like not all of it. Like I, I mentioned yes some no, stuff that's yeah. unique. Yeah. But there are some things that have uh, that you can clearly see other movies have pulled from. Oh, for sure. So yeah. it's it's one of those things where it's like I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it again because I've seen those movies. I haven't seen this. Movie. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it's cool to see it uh, done first. And, and you kind of have to wear those movie. goggles where yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, no, this was before like most things. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which is, again, the first one that struck me was that Halloween-esque mm-hmm. serial killer <laughs> scene. So or like intro, right? Where mm-hmm. you just really feel um, where you really. F- yeah, it. it, it it's 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 so hard for me to explain this one uh i i enjoyed it i i don't think that i think that looking at it with that lens through that lens it's i appreciate it um in terms of my enjoyment though i don't think that it's i i could like it as much as you like my all-time favorite sure i think it's it's a good film okay yeah, I'll I'll stop there for now. Okay. Um. Yeah. Actually, there was a few points there uh, that you brought up that I actually wanted to talk about too that I forgot to mention as well. Like one of the big parts that I really like about this movie is that I find a lot of the characters have distinctive personalities, mm-hmm. which I think in a lot of movies, like as you said, they're very throwaway, you know, yeah. stereotypical kind of characters. Whereas this movie, I think that you can identify with like each one you kind of know almost someone who's like that mm-hmm. and i think that's really cool so you kind of get sucked more into the characters and things like that and it's actually interesting that you mentioned it gave you a halloween feel because obviously it was like only four years later that came out yeah but also apparently uh bob clark or whatever was actually gonna potentially be involved with halloween because john carpenter was a huge fan of black christmas and when he decided because he was kind of like not big about horror anymore. Bob Clark kind of wanted to leave. And John Carpenter was like offered this, you know, this idea. And he kind of asked uh, Bob Clark, like, what would you do if you did a sequel to Black Christmas or whatever? And he basically was like, well, if I did, you know, the killer would get caught somehow. He would escape a mental institution on Halloween night and I'd call it Halloween. So, and then I guess later on, the the eventual writers like what, Deborah Hill and... And John uh, for, Carpenter. Yeah, they uh, kind of had this like babysitter thing that got brought to them, and then they kind of took that and yeah, the producer put it all together. Yeah, the producer of Halloween just came for is like, I want to do a movie about a babysitter yeah. killer, and then John Carpenter brought in the the when they realized that no film had ever taken place on Halloween yeah. day prior to that movie, like and no wow. film was called Halloween, nothing yeah. ever had a title. They just stumbled upon gold. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it was a new thing at the time. Like I said, even Black Christmas, like technically two years before there was like Tales from the Crypt had that all through the house segment as a part of their anthology that technically was a Christmas horror thing. And but really, that was about it. Like there wasn't really there was a TV movie home for the holidays as well. But it was a TV movie. It was an hour long. And uh, Sally Field was actually in that. There's a couple like crappy B movies, but that like was right Santa before the Martians and all that. Crap. Yeah, sure, but it was, but it was like those movies. A couple that I mentioned were literally like two years before Black Christmas. Yeah, so this was kind of like almost like the ground zero for holiday stuff, which would then blow up, especially after Halloween, mm-hmm. would just open the floodgates, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Alex, what uh, what are your thoughts about Black Christmas, and was it? Too black or too white? As a white guy, <laughs> <laughs> I really liked it. Awesome. There, there are always two different experiences you can have when watching a movie. You can watch it alone or you can watch it with a group. And this mm. is the first time me seeing this movie, I watched it with the four of you. Yeah. And it's quite different as opposed to if I had watched it at home alone. I think I should have watched it at home alone and... It's not to take away anything from you guys. Like, it's not an insult in any way, shape, or form. Like, it was really fun to -hmm. watch it with the four of you. And and you're going to have to do that singing a little bit later because that's got (laughs) to be immortalized. (laughs) Just for my sake, if nothing else. Because watching the movie alone, I wouldn't have got that. Like you're like I I looking at that scene where the the kids are singing and it goes mm-hmm. back to her and she's standing there yeah. in the doorway just listening and it reminds me of some stand up where some some guy was describing something like that and he said you have to stand there like an idiot until it's over and that's that's kind of what I saw now obviously mm-hmm. there's a lot more to it than that there's mm-hmm. a reason why it was cut that way sure so again it goes back to 
the experience of watching it alone versus watching it with friends. Yeah. I would have, I think I would have taken more time to really think about why a certain line was said Mm -hmm. or why a certain sequence was cut the way it was. So I wouldn't have had as much fun watching it alone. Mm -hmm. But I I still would have really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. There were... The when I first saw the the sequence, the opening sequence, the POV yeah. of the serial killer, I immediately thought of Evil Dead. Sure, yes. And I I thought, did did they get that from this? Uh well, technically, they they usually give that credit to Peeping Tom, actually, because Peeping Tom is all about. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's fucking great, though. I'd love to show it on this again. But it's uh yeah, it's basically about a guy who can't put a camera down mm. and he loves to film everything, but he also likes to kill people. And so there's constant POV, POV, POV. And that was like it was like right around the same time as Psycho, even a little bit before, if I'm not mistaken. It came out the same oh. year. It was the same year, yeah. And yeah, it was kind of like again that, you know, if you want to go to like birthplace of like slasher, if you really want to go back, like it's kind of like those movies. Right. Mm. Um, but peeping Tom was kind of the first to like really do, I think if I'm not mistaken, POV, like of the killer and stuff like that. Maybe that was the big one. It popular. It, maybe it kind of made it noticed, but well, Halloween is the one that actually, well, that made it that like up, mainstream. But that's but, what I mean. But yeah. the, but the one that kind of like really started it though, I think it was like peeping Tom. Cause that's mm. also a big part of the movie too. But anyways, <laughs> there are two other movies that are that I saw in this. The first one being Last House on the Left. I think sure. that was 72? 72. 72. Yeah. 72. So and I Spit on Your Grave. Yeah. Which I think was 73, 74? Uh, it was I think 70s. it might be it was seventies, but I might be yeah. later than that. I can't okay. remember. Maybe I feel it's like, like it's a bit later. Yeah, that's yeah. ringing more of a bell. Uh I don't think it was as early as Last House on the Left. For sure. No, I spit on your grave. I think it was like in seventy nine. Even no, I think it was maybe. Than that. I think it was seventy six, or maybe I don't. I can't remember. It's seventies. We know yeah, that much. But I think it was 70s. the second half of the seventies. When I hear the killer's voice on the phone, I'm reminded of those two films because sure. of how demented it yeah. sounds and and how wacky and weird it was. Like it was it was almost randomness mm. that he was going for, mm-hmm. and it that tone in that voice on the phone and what it, what he was saying, if he was trying to say anything, it reminded me of those two films. Mm-hmm. So that, that I thought was quite interesting. Mm-hmm. And I love the ending. Yeah. That is yeah. one of my all time favorite endings of all time. Yes. I think that ending, it's so anti-modern. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like nowadays everybody's like, Oh, the big reveal, we're going to show the killer. Now we're going to show this or that. And it is a bit of a twist, but it's a twist by, just being like you didn't get them and you're never gonna know who it is and i find that so creepy because it well, we can know be anybody it we don't it's billy <clears throat> sure that's yeah but if billy? that's even him like you know it's billy because just because he says it but mm-hmm. who knows that could be talking making up that name like he's so mentally unstable yeah. which is of course as you mentioned like with the phone calls is so creepy and yeah, that ending as well as that first phone call, those are the two moments that really creep me out in this movie every time. That first phone call, I think, really sets up the, oh, shit, like, stuff's going to go down in this movie, and it's pretty early, right? Yeah. And I just love how he's, like, doing all the random stuff, and then at the very end, he's just like, I'm going to kill you, just normal voice, and it hangs up, and I'm just like, oh, my God. Every time I see it, it's creepy. Yeah, and yeah. there was another... Movie, I think it was a TV movie from the early '80s. It's called "Are You in the House Alone?" Yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. I only remember the the title because the the guy who was on the phone in that film he said it in such a creepy way. It was like, "Are you in the house alone?" Yeah, yeah. Then it hangs up. So it <clears throat> it just it brings back these memories of these other films. Mm-hmm. But like you were saying, it was the precursor to modern horror and what they use. Mm-hmm in modern horror films nowadays and and it makes sense well and then there was also when a stranger calls too which i, I was believe was 79 li- I was saving for that 79 and that one again it's like kind of a similar premise it's like someone's in the house blah yeah. blah blah well, i've that, only that, seen the remake of that oh one boy. unfortunately because <laughs> yeah it's not bad like the original but it is you can't help but think like oh yeah like yeah that's basically mm-hmm. that's an old like urban legend tale of it is the, the babysitter yep. getting phone calls and then it's from yeah. the person who's calling yeah did this house. did this did this start the uh the caller is inside the house yeah 
wondering that. It might have been uh, one of the first movies. Yeah, I, I think it really was. Like, honestly, if I think about it, it's like, yeah, I think it was. When did, I don't know, remember when the movie When a Stranger Calls came out. because that 79. Was, 79, because yeah. it was like the first, the whole movie is like the first 20 minutes are like intense. And then after yes. that, it's kind of And like, then it kind of dies down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it was like five years later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so Black Christmas came out first. Yes. Already. It predated a lot. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, I mean, unless you're talking about Psycho and Peeping Tom, like some of the or, uh, Eyes that, Without a Face. I think that makes it more interesting, the fact that mm. uh, that it kind of started a lot of trends. It really, it really did, yeah. and you can see where it led, right? And then, of course, Halloween, him literally being, like, attached for a brief moment and then leaving and all that. But... Uh, um, and also, like, it's interesting, the whole Halloween in this, because you can see it, too, that, like, I was thinking about this the other day, that Halloween is, like, essentially, like, a mirror. It's, like, a, it's, like, it's almost, like, opposites, I find. It's, like, obviously, it's, like, Christmas, and you have Halloween. You have a killer who talks constantly, but you don't see him. You have a killer who never talks, but you see him a lot. Like, there's so many different things that are just, you know, instead of, like, just a house, it's to a neighborhood. You know, there's a lot of things mm-hmm. like that that kind of... You can kind of see inspiration, but flipped Mm -hmm. kind of thing too. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. And one more thing about John Carpenter. There was an interview he did, and it was grouped together with a lot of different interviews with other horror directors. You might know the one. And he was talking about how he looked at Dario Argento films. Sure. Mm. That makes sense. I think that was that. And he was saying that the one one of the things that stood out was that... there would be beautiful women in that film. They were just getting so brutally murdered. Yeah. And I can't remember if those films that he's talking about came before Black Christmas or after. Oh, for like, sure. Uh, well, Dario Argento, he started his own giallo thing is what the genre was called. It's like Italian like murder mysteries, mm-hmm. right? And But they were like more violent. and yeah. But there was a big mystery element to it, right? And that's what yeah. he was famous for. And he did, uh, what is it? The Bird with the Crystal Plumage in 69. And When did uh, Deep Red come out? 75. Ooh. So just after. Yeah. But he still did, like, he was doing his Animals trilogies and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he did, like, Bird with the Crystal Plumage and, like, Grey Flies on, or uh, was it Flies on Grey Velvet or whatever, mm-hmm. and, like, a couple others. But, uh, yeah, I could definitely see it. And, and Argento, like, a lot of people get creeped out because, like, he's, like, quoted as saying, like, I love seeing beautiful women murdered. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> And stuff like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, so I could definitely, that makes a lot of sense, you know. And he was kind of, and he's also like another head in like the slasher um, stuff too. There's also, I forgot to mention Mario Baba, because uh, right. he did like, I was in Bay of Blood, I think, was 71. So technically that's also a little bit of a precursor too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's reminiscent of that line in Fight Club. I wanted to destroy something beautiful. Sure. So that yeah. maybe oh, very that's much a so. throwback to Dario. Well, the know? whole the whole thing too is it's like you know you hate to see someone. Obviously, I guess the idea is like oh you hate to see someone so good looking or like innocent or whatever get harmed so mm. terribly. Uh, yeah, I, I think guess. it's I think it's just kind of a subconscious way of making you more invested yeah. in that character's ultimate demise. Just just mm-hmm. that little less. It's like I don't want to see her go because you attach to. I mean, it, it's human nature to be at- attached yeah. to beauty, so you automatically feel a connection with this person. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely what it is. So he was he was definitely on to something, and then obviously continued and continued and hasn't really changed. Yeah, but Argento's films, like, he does a really good job with the gore and the, mm-hmm. like, kind of the, the, the way that... It's, it's not, like, uh, it's... It's not needlessly violent. Like it's, sure. it serves a purpose, and it's really well done. It's very yeah. stylized. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's stylized, uh, which is important. Yeah. So I felt like that's what this was missing because I think I mentioned it at a certain point. I'm like, this isn't very gory, which you know isn't. But that was sticking, intentional. It's not a sticking point for me with most films, right? Yeah. Like I, you know, I I was never into you know, watching Saw movies just because I like watching gore yeah. and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I, I, it needs to be stylized like it does, it is with Argento films, right? Mm-hmm. So I yeah. felt like that's what it was missing because it does feel kind of like an Argento film in certain ways. Like, there are hmm. elements of it in... There are, there are elements of it that I felt... Um, it has that feel or that mood. It's, uh, to me, it did. See, for me, it, it, the thing I like about Black Christmas is, like, I, I don't really see as much Argento and stuff like that. I see more of just that it's grounded. And I, that's what I like about it is that it feels real. Like, there is a score there, but it's very... Again, if you want to do the whole Halloween thing, Halloween is, like, this big 
score. This movie, it's very in the background. It pops up here and there, but it's a lot of silence. It's a lot of wind, and it yeah. kind of really puts you into yeah. like this place. It feels a lot more real and stuff yeah. like that. So I think Argento, you're right, it is stylized. and It's got crazy music. Again, I could see Carpenter really attached to that because music was such a big part of his movies, yeah. uh, Argento. So. Some of that music in the beginning, that reminded me of what I hear today in dark ambient music. Sure. So that could could be where that whole genre of music came from. Oh, who knows? I mean, that that's Maybe. a big one because music, yeah. it's like, it's so, it's so big. Well, right? yeah. it's, then, then it comes to... Like if you're saying the the realism or the, yeah. the that that aspect of it, yeah, you're right. So yeah, Argento uses music uh, quite a bit, he- quite heavily, to mm-hmm. help us uh, to help uh, kind of put forward his style, right? Mm-hmm. His his way of doing uh, these murders and these these yeah. scenes, right? So I get that, but in terms of I, I meant like I kind of wish. I guess I ca- I kind of wish that there was a little more style when it oh, came okay. to to. Uh, at least the murders themselves, because they felt like such. I mean, it, I mean, there was that one scene with the children's choir, which was pretty good. The way I like the cut. editing. Uh, the editing was one, really yeah. well done. Um, but in turn, it just felt so to me. It just felt mm. so anticlimactic. Okay, just because like the murders just seemed like they they were kind of throwaway to me. Like I, I didn't feel the impact of them as much personally. Uh, so you say realism, but like yeah. I didn't feel that raw like that the how raw something like that should be i didn't really quite feel that but there there were things that kind of distracted from that which i'll Mm -hmm. bring up uh, okay i'll mention later but um yeah it's i just i didn't quite feel that okay yeah i mean i guess that's just a difference of opinion because i do like how it was grounded and obviously like i'd said to you that bob clark he you know in the script it was you know much more graphic they were going to be going like way more of a gory route but uh he decided to pull back good you know because that's the thing right there's movies also succeed with like you filling it in with your own imagination and stuff like that right um so i think that was more of what he was doing right instead of showing you a ton of stuff you know it's like no he just kind of like walks into a room and the door closes and that's all you need in order for you to fill things in with your imagination though Mm -hmm. and to make it truly scary Mm -hmm. like scarier in your mind than it would be than it could ever be in reality mm. in order for that to succeed you have to make whatever comes before that mm. terrifying like absolutely terrifying to, yeah. to you right and i just never found that killer to be so terrifying that i would fill in all this gruesome shit i'm like he stabbed her he stabbed her yeah see, like, he I, stabbed her and yeah that's what happens with murder those phone calls i'm surprised didn't sell you because those i find well, are so fuck, creepy oh, he, and think it about basically way, shows he's capable of anything i mean the like, coolest murder sequence in that was the hook right so like that was like the one where it was like oh shit this is like really demented right yeah but like you know he suffocated he suffocated one or he yeah. stabbed another that's just it's i mean there's but doesn't no, that feel a little more real you, though you say it, like fill it in in your mind but yeah i, I know what he did i saw what he did because it was you know you see what he's doing you just don't get to see it explicitly right so i know what he's doing so i'm i there's nothing for me to fill in besides the gore but which Halloween's is no big deal the same to me. way where mm-hmm. You see in the very first yeah. scene of Halloween. But here's the thing. Your, and here's the thing um, I wanted to... About some, Halloween. No, no, no. About Black Christmas is that I find Black Christmas to be a much more violent movie than Halloween. Yeah, that's a good point. Because you sure. don't see any blood in Halloween. You see actually a good fair amount of blood in this. And yes. Also, I feel like your disconnect is more or less that you don't have any connection to this killer. I don't. See, that's the thing. I agree, yeah. oh, right? That's sure. what the point I'm making is that like... So... Uh, so... In Halloween, you the killer is really he has a scary, name. right? Yeah. So he has a yeah, exactly. He has a name. He has a terrifying mask. He's uh, mm. you know his background. Mm. So it's 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 uh it's it's really scary, right? Whereas yeah. this, it's like I don't know. It's 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 uh, it's a mental patient essentially, yeah. which I, I think but, is very yeah. scary. Well, like, I, think I think that's not, I don't yeah. find that very yeah. scary because you know, in terms of I don't know, maybe it's your your level of experience with people with mental illness, like how much that terrifies you, and it should like right. I have nothing. I I totally understand why people would mm. be afraid of that. You like I understand um, schizophrenia is uh, very scary. Yeah, I understand that. But for me, it just it doesn't have that impact. Like uh, mm. Mike Myers does, though. Mm. 
So I mean, they're two. The they're, two. they're complete opposites. I mean, those two, exactly. Right? One works for me, the other okay. doesn't well, work and, quite and as much. I think that's is, what we're getting. Which at. is why I needed a yeah. bit more from those scenes because, like, I the guy himself wasn't enough to make it scary for me. And see, I I really appreciate it. See, that's why I love. By the way, I love both movies. Like, I think they're you know they're great, and I think they almost like again. I was saying they're kind of like opposites but it's like a good thing like they'd almost be kind of a neat double bill really Mm because one gives you one that one doesn't have it's like okay you're gonna have one where he's hidden the whole time and it's a very different movie now you're gonna have another one that has him there the whole time and Mm -hmm. you know just different score different feel right i think they also both have quite a bit of atmosphere it's just different right yeah Yeah. um as well And, and i think that's it's going back to what alex is saying i mean i think this film too you do benefit from watching it you know, alone or with like maybe one person at night. It's currently like we watched it before noon. Yeah, so like windows there's like, are open. So there's like sun beaming through the windows. And it's it's not ideal. To, I did my best to block them out. So I mean, you can't really chirping. do anything about it though. We're not right. going to be. It's, it's it's actually Christmas time, and there's, well, the there's Christmas decorations thing, the Christmas and happy thing shit everywhere. Nailed. You kind of nailed the Christmas thing, though. I will say that, but but yeah, obviously we're That's not going to be like, oh, let's come over super late just to watch this movie. It yeah. just wasn't yeah. ideal. Yeah. right but it, it, but you're right though like yeah watching it alone i find it you do or with like one person like at late at night you do get more of that atmosphere you take more mm-hmm. of the the subtle score and just like yeah you're you're stuck in that house these characters and things like that and it, it does definitely um you know stick with you a little Add bit to the experience oh 100 percent. yeah but moving on I, to uh the, i just quickly oh. want to know why alex was chuckling over in the corner there. i was wondering like, that too because he's actually, just he was just there snickering at I, like about a couple minutes ago may i make a guess yes yeah. uh for one, the first time you laughed is when he said the scary mask which you know is captain kirk yes that's exactly mm-hmm. i was gonna what? say what's so scary about william shatner oh, okay, motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> fair, fair enough you know, i was just like that's what he's laughing at because i had a smirk the same time he said that oh my like... god <laughs> uh so yeah i guess now we move on to the one person who had seen it before yeah. i was, was well, no, jack here no thanks to you oh well, yeah <laughs> fair enough i i'm trying to push it to everybody yeah well i've seen this a few times yeah. um I, and i have seen it by myself and with a group of people yeah. as well so yes. i totally get where you're coming from you kind of pick up on little things mm-hmm. that you missed uh like there's some things i'm like we were watching it and the first time olivia hussey's character brings up about having an abortion uh, it was in the piano hall recital. I'm like, I think I was the only one who heard that because it was during while you, all you're talking, and then you stopped. And I was like, when she brings that up, I hope that doesn't. You guys don't go like, oh, that's coming up out of nowhere, but it didn't. So, but um, mm-hmm. overall, uh, yeah. So seeing this, it was nice seeing it again because that's been a couple of years since I have seen it. Yeah. Um, and with a new perspective and all that, and yeah, just hearing y'all talk and finding out certain movies that I thought uh, like when a stranger call came out first so mm. finding out that all, this movie has so many different tropes mm-hmm. in it that has been influential to this day yeah is crazy things that became horror movie yeah tropes, yeah but the one thing i i really really dig about this movie more than anything is that this whole movie is a perfect example of hitchcock's uh use of suspense sure with yeah. uh planting the bomb under the table mm-hmm. uh we know the killer's in the house within the first 30 seconds of this movie and he never leaves So we're constantly on edge, Mm -hmm. wondering when is he going to come? Because we see him go after that one innocent girl and the fact that she stays up there the entire time Mm -hmm. and doesn't move in that creepy, like you can see the breath going into her mouth and Mm -hmm. everything like that. It's like, that's creepy as hell. Um, And yeah, just like all the supporting characters are great. I love that it does have, at least in the first like 30 minutes, a lot of humor. Yes. Um, A lot of good humor. Like ones that actually not just a cheap joke or a sex like there's some sex jokes, but they're actually done where you don't groan or roll your eyes Mm -hmm. like in most slasher films where you want the characters to die like immediately. (laughs) Yeah, just bored with them. Yeah, Yeah, like Margot. Like all the characters who die are the ones who we like the most. Like Margot Kidder's character, she's Mm -hmm. fantastic. She's entertaining as hell. I don't know the um. The sorority house lady, the oh yeah, the, oh yeah. Mrs. All, Mac, hilarious. All Mrs. Mac. Her, she was my favorite. All of her little <laughs> hiding spots for all the booze yeah. is it's just great. Um, but yeah, I also yeah, and I love the ending too with that he's there 
and all that. He's still there. And you're just like, oh, shit. It's so simple. It's so simple. And so it's just simple. like, it just leaves you hanging. And it's yeah. like, fuck you. Like, And I do sort of a little disagree. Like, I don't disagree. But it's because um, we kind of pointed out that you just, you can uh, connect with a killer that you don't know. You, uh, and you can't find that scary. Um, for me, I yeah. find it, um, I don't see this in a lot of movies at all no. today where you don't see the killer. It's always it's always the setup of the whole of those kind of movies where the payoff is seeing the killer. It's always the reveal. And I don't know, you know what? Maybe it's because like nonsensical you, you know, so basically the whole uh like this character speaking in nonsensical yeah. ways, right? Just being kind of ridiculous mm-hmm. and and it's terrifying cuz you're like people don't talk like that. I don't know, Zach. You kind of mm. talk like that, so maybe you I talk just, in three maybe, voices. Maybe not three voices, but you say <laughs> some yeah, shit. Hold up. You say how some... much vodka and Red Bull did I have? <laughs> you, okay, you when say this some happened. nonsensical shit. Maybe I'm just desensitized. Well, that's a li- okay. That's a little different. Maybe I'm just desensitized. One person to crazy. saying some goofy shit versus somebody making three different voices. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And that, clearly, yeah. something. Yeah. And, and, and then with, him ending, and then him. But I just found it comedic, call. almost like that I first phone call where he's just like he's doing all that, and then I just I love how he's just like I'm going to kill you, and it hangs up, mm. and it's like fuck. It's like it almost gives you the idea of like he is mentally stable, but yet he can shut mm. that off and just like yeah. kill you when he wants. Like he's he's not too unstable to like not be able to kill you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I do want to bring up one point because um, I know Andrew is dying to talk about this, but uh, maybe I'll oh. get to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do I do have a a response to that. Um oh, but... there's no excuse. Oh no no no, I'm not excusing <laughs> it. I'm more just sort of kind of giving some weight to what you to your claim. Okay. Um but I'll I kind of wrap uh, my my initial opinion um is that yeah, I still really dig this movie. Mm-hmm. Um the more I watch, the more I do kind of take more out of it. Mm-hmm. Um I do like the lack of score. Um yeah. The yeah, the the relate these characters are not just throwaway characters. Mm-hmm. You kind of each one not only has a distinct personality, but they also you can just they all don't look the same either. Yeah, you, well, you know, yeah. there's different either different hairstyles or just different everything. Like they made them as distinct as possible because in the end, most of them were going to die anyway. So. Mm-hmm. As horror films do, sure. Yeah. So, but it's okay to still put effort into your characters. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. They just don't. Like, no, in a lot of movies. Yeah. So yeah, no, for the most part, uh, yeah, no, I, I dig this movie. There's the only thing I can say that's a little nitpicky. Um, I will say um, I've seen Olivia Hussey do better. Well, yeah, she's a little, as you're saying in the very first time we see her, just a little theatrical, <laughs> mm-hmm. a little too much. But I've seen what enough. Was her first line again? Hello, hello, it was that? It was hello, on the phone. Oh, on the phone though, yeah. Yeah. nobody says hello like that on yeah. the phone. <laughs> so it was, it's just a little too much. But I've seen enough uh, work from her to know that I know she's a great actress. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's kind of like, eh, she's young. Well, I mean, it's it's that, and I mean, I didn't mind it as much though too, because like at the same time, mm-hmm. in my head, what I'm thinking is that. They've been getting calls throughout the night. Yeah. So at this point, she wouldn't. It wouldn't be the first phone call where she's doing that. So I think she would already be a little hysterical. Yeah. Out of all the characters, though, who answered the phone, she was still the most unnatural to answer the phone. Yeah. I Everyone was else say. was just fine. Yeah, you'd say like "hello, hello, yeah. hello." Like you change your tone, like you're trying to get. That's yeah. how people say that when they when they don't hear anything on the other end, right? You don't just like do like a a proclamation hello you know like that's what it kind of sounded like (laughs) that's how you should answer the phone you should answer the phone like that i think you should i think that should be your 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 voicemail go back to whatever that's so that's so pointlessly (laughs) that's so pointlessly nitpicky for such like a For such a weird introduction to her character, she ended up redeeming it. She's fine. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's no, just, no. It's a nitpick. I, like it's just said. a weird nitpick. Oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a nitpick. I'm just yeah. saying that she's a little, a little theatrical at times, but like I said, for the most part, I think she she handles herself very well. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and that didn't it didn't bother me. Like I mean, personally. Oh no. Oh, no. But it, I, I, it get it. I get it. I get it. It doesn't bother me. It's yeah, just it it's just, just something you, you can't help yeah. but kind of notice at times. But it sure. does nowhere. It doesn't detract the movie. It doesn't go like, oh god, they should have replaced her. No. Well, no, 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 no. No, no, no. It's more. It's it's like any like horror movies with young actresses some it's not their best work mm. uh, there's most of them are just starting out but they're still doing a good job well i also don't know how much research she had into the role because she picked the movie because her psychic told her to so uh-huh. nice fun fact oh yeah Sweet a couple of fun facts i forgot to mention so olivia speaking of olivia Hussey, she actually met steve martin like 
a few years later and Steve Martin was like, oh, like, I'm a big fan of you. And he she thought he was going to mention Romeo and Juliet because that was their big movie. Right. But he mentioned Black Christmas and that he had seen it like 27 times. Yeah. Nice. And, <laughs> I remember that. And also uh, it's Elvis Presley. It was his favorite horror movie. Too. For like two years. Yeah, pretty much. And then, ah, but oh, but Jesus. the family, but, but the family, but the family still uh, apparently watches it every year. It's like what I do with this movie. Like they watch it every Christmas. Yeah, that's morbid. I think it's awesome. I think it's the yeah. best. Oh yeah, did I mention it's my favorite Christmas movie of all time too? You're a fucked up person. <laughs> Even more so than Die Hard. Die Hard's one of the best too. But I mean, see that I can get. I think it's more like it's you know it's a wonderful life is like. Your runner up, and so is a Christmas runner story. Up. Same director, <laughs> Bob Clark, Christmas yeah. story. Yeah. Christ. As yeah. well. Yeah, for those who don't know, yeah, the, the director of Black Christmas also directed everyone's favorite a Christmas story. Yeah, I think actually the uh, Christmas story live is actually happening pretty soon. That's it's got funny. like an all star cast, and they're doing it live on oh, air geez. and stuff. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's got like a big cast, and it's well, like it's better Matthew than... Broderick's in it too. Oh, geez. of course. As long as it's better than Dirty Dancing yeah. remake that was on oh. TV. But they're doing, yeah, they're doing it live, and it's like it just goes to show like but it's funny because bob clark's career like from 72 to christmas story in 83 that was like his big time but then after christmas story <laughs> is where it starts to go downhill yeah um so know. christmas story was almost like his big hit and then he was like i'm out i just gotta do the baby geniuses movies now i just gotta do baby geniuses Ooh, baby geniuses all couple, of them couple decades like the first two yeah. at least i think those are nice and safe near the bottom of your priority list thank you <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i guess uh, last but not least uh, we got uh Rylan. Oh, yeah, I guess I got to say my two cents. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is my first time seeing this movie. I have had the the, the, the dubious pleasure of seeing the remake before. Uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one's better. This one's better. <laughs> No shit. Don't, don't check Rotten Tomatoes. Just a little Just take bit. Take word for it. Oh my god. <laughs> the word of rye. <laughs> oh, the, the the word of the, the word of the masses. I think everyone can agree on. Yeah. That. No one's arguing with that. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like uh, if you if you want a version where you do get to know the killer, check out the remake oh, because god. that does not work. That does say, not work at all. I will say at least it's a different movie. But yeah. like, I but hate, other than that, so, so is every movie. No, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, like I hate. I know what he's saying. Like I hate it when they just retread when they're like the thing or funny example. games or funny games. Fuck that. Well, right? funny yeah. games. Is I like hate it when they do that. It was literally it, yeah. or Psycho. It was yeah. like like shot for yeah. shot. No, I hear you. Yeah, no, but but it's just what they did sucks. But this, like, yeah, it's just it was, it, yeah, it's just dog shit. The remake. It's there's nothing salvageable at all. Baking people in the cookies, man. I guess he's just trying to give them credit for trying something different. Like, yeah, at least all. like you get an A for effort. I did look it into a little bit, and there, there was like the director was having constant clashes with the uh, the studio and all that. Which oh well, yeah, I'm which not, is I'm never good for the outcome of a movie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But yeah, no, that I, stuff. In, in terms of finding the killer, killer scary. Um, like I guess. I suppose. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't really get sucked into the horror movies the same way a lot of people do. I'm, yeah. I'm into thrillers, I'm into suspense, but I'm not really into, I'm not really into violence or gore or anything. So horror is not usually my genre of choice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I found the, I found the, the villain in this one to, or killer in this case to be pretty unnerving because you do make it uh, quite obvious from the start that he's clearly mentally, mentally unhinged, but also, like Zach says, he can get his focus together enough to come yeah. and kill you, OS. So, I. But, but basically, he's 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 unpredictable. You don't know what he's gonna do. That's what he should have said at the end of that first book. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, kill you. I'm ass. gonna kill your ass, bitch. <laughs> Click. I'm not sure if that's as intimidating, but I don't know. Maybe if I was on the other end of the receiver, I'd be singing a different tune. I don't really know. Um, but this, what I like this mo- about this movie a lot is the pacing. It doesn't mess around like a lot of modern horror movies like to do. It doesn't like to dick around for the first 20, 25 minutes and introduce all like your happy, perfect little characters and their perfect, happy little lives and pretend it's a movie where everything is going to be okay, where obviously we know we're sitting down to watch a horror movie and it's not. But this one doesn't waste our time. It's mm. like just Jack says, like, immediately we know something's, something's up. There's somebody in the house who's not supposed to be, and stuff's about to go down. They establish mm-hmm. that right away. And it's like, all right, 
we're, we're, we're getting right down to business. You basically destroyed like 90% of the horror films that have come out in like the last <laughs> 50 years. <laughs> Rightfully so, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. I was like... Like wow, I said, effort. It's okay to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> oh! Oh! I wish Scott were here yeah, right I now. Know, right? <laughs> He's just gonna have a bonus episode where he's just here for some of this shit. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, no, that, that's exactly it, right? It's it is very different, I find, from a lot of movies. It is a product of the '70s, but it's also, mm-hmm. I think, ahead of its time in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of people who did it later, in my opinion, you know, they took a lot of things from it and they made it their own, and that's great. But obviously, it's hard to outdo the the Mac Daddy, right? Like the one before it, so. Um, pretty cool. I also forgot to mention too that it's it's also pretty awesome. You know, obviously this being seventy four and things that it's it's pretty damn near an all female cast. And I I know that that yeah. was a big thing that would happen, not until like almost like the late nineties, I'd say in horror, where it's like, hey, let's turn a little more, you know, where towards women, women, where there's more women. Like obviously a lead lady was you know a thing in a lot of movies, but in horror they started to market it more towards. You know, like with Ringu and things like that, more towards like where women, all the right? women get murdered by this guy. Like the entire the entire house is mm-hmm. a sorority, right? And all the women die. Mm-hmm. There, to be fair, there's a guy that dies, or yeah, or just one that I can think of, right? I think, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So one guy does die, but it's all women getting killed by this one guy, mm-hmm. right? So I, I mean, like, I, I'm not gonna sit here and think that it's some like. Uh, like in terms of giving uh, female actresses yes. work, yeah, that's but more in what terms I'm of like being a step forward, uh, like I wasn't saying that. You know, it, it, it's more having that that many it's, roles for women yeah, in one movie I, in I'm 1974. That that's was what not, I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah, it would be different. Because it's yeah. not gonna be a horror movie. It'd be movie different if, like, the dying. the killer, uh, it, if the killer was a woman or something like that, and like it, they had. Uh, well, they've done that, like. Yeah, but in a yeah. way that it, if it was done like that, you know, like mm. in a way where it wasn't uh, a focal point or anything, it just happened to you. You gave the the lead villain kind of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That role too. That would have been interesting, but. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I guess, yeah, in terms of giving work, I, I can agree with that. that. That's what I'm saying. And, like, I mean, I just find a lot of movies, you know, you'd have, like, the lead woman. Or just be mixed or you'd have a lot of guys or whoever, right? It really would be all over. But you don't typically see that until, like I said, later years where they've now, like, had the whole extremity thing in France, too, where they've, like, mainly done that in now the that genre. Cool. And, like... You know, yeah, where it's like everybody is yeah. a woman, like the villain's a woman, the mailman's See, a woman. See, that's that's like, what I appreciate. They, like that, it's that pretty was crazy. Awesome, I love like, it. That was really cool. And, but but and then you got movies like Descent, which is probably the one that people talk about the most, mm. where it's like literally everybody's a woman except for the creatures, and of course people dying in that movie too. But it's like it's a horror movie. It's like it's just mm. it's gonna it comes to the territory. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but almost like treating a character like Glass in the context of a story because they're a woman is almost like more uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, is, well, is almost different. more insulting. So yeah. like, yeah. I mean, basically just just put them in there and then let what happens happen. But that's the thing about going back to what we were saying before well, is that these diversity. characters are developed too. Yeah. I mean, they you actually feel for them. Whereas if they're just a number, well, then it's like well, that's a the bit thing. Different. It's like diversity in roles. It's not like they're that all too. they're all victims, right? Yeah. yeah, like that, and that's what they were in this movie. They're all victims, yeah. as opposed to like having you know outside characters who aren't. Mm-hmm. So like that's why I, I at first when you were saying that I was like I don't oh. I don't really see this as being like no 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 no, no. anything. Yeah, but if you're just approaching it from like it's people, just cool people that getting work and, the getting, numbers, and yeah. getting exposure and stuff, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I can agree with that. But yeah, I don't know. It's just like yeah, it's, oh, okay, it's I see. Yeah. Like all the women are victims. A hundred percent. Yeah, women yeah. Are victims. Hundred percent to a guy. So I was like, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. just different. No, I wasn't talking about that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, and then. Uh... Like they bring up like some of the things they even bring up in the movie. Like, what's one of the ma- minor subplots is in fact uh, between Olivia Hussey's character and I don't know the guy actor's name about like Kier, having, Dula, yeah, whatever, about having yeah. an abortion. Which in the seventies, when is that a plot? You know, a plot thing in a movie like where that is one of the like that's not really brought up uh, at least in then because that was mm. uh, someone's have to correct me on this, mm. but 
d- didn't uh, when did Roe versus Wade get passed? It was around the same time in the seventies mm-hmm. where it became yeah. legalized. So for something like that to be, it was in yeah. There I, as well, I would think it would have been an even touchier subject back then. Oh, oh yeah. of course. <laughs> so so yeah. and but that's a women's uh, issue that was brought into this movie as well. And that's what I was going to say too, is I also like how she, I I do like her character a lot actually, because I like how she's kind of like, I'm doing this. This is my decision. Fuck you. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. and I do like that. I do like how like she doesn't sway or whatever. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's something I think uh, can definitely add to your, your point. Oh, I think that's probably the biggest thing. Like I'm not, I'm not denouncing what you said. Obviously they are all victims, you know, and stuff like that. But but that that is a good point. I actually forgot about that, yeah. and that is something that I do like about her character a lot is that she does come off as very strong, and you know yeah. she sets her mind to something she's going to do it, and she brings up even some good points like in that argument against uh, two thousand and one dude Dave. Um, yeah, Dave. We'll just call him <laughs> Dave. It's easier to say um, that uh, you know that yeah you had goals and shit like that too. Like well I want to do stuff like that too, and this is going to fuck it up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, she's like very I'm career not, minded. I'm not beholden and that's to you and your and and your you know future yeah. child or yeah. anything. Yeah, and, yeah like and, it's and my horror, body, it's my decision. Yeah. Yeah. And the horror films that were coming out around that time were very like the exploitation films and all that. That's probably another reason why they didn't do a whole lot of gore is because you had all the grindhouse films and all that. Like right then, around that exact time where there was you know skin flicks and all that crap, sure. where that was the draw. So obviously, Bob Clark did something a little bit more tasteful and a little yes. bit more stylized, and obviously much more. Uh, for a mass audience but mm. incorporating little things that can set the audience off like the the language that was on the killer's uh, phone yes this pre that like that's just like a year after uh, the exorcist with, yes um reagan and all that so hearing that kind of language as well was oh my god I've well yeah never... they say the the, the the c words back to back to back don't yep. they? yeah like they just well the uk didn't get that version but yeah so like <laughs> all, all these like like little things just um really i think help strengthen the movie and also yep. i feel like the problem with doing gore especially or anything very violent is that you, you risk dating the movie more so and overdoing it just that in general yeah. um because certain certain gore effects um like you look at the ones in uh in the dario movies they're good and they're effective yeah but realistic no uh um, no whereas, they're stylistic yes yeah whereas yeah, this that's movie, why i think whereas, it's style over yeah, sub, or like over realism yeah whereas this so. movie yeah. not showing much kind of still leaves it as you were saying, more grounded because mm. you're not being taken out of seeing a knife going in over and over again. Yeah. And you see blood spurting out. Like the most, the closest it got was um, the Margot Kidder with sure. the, um, the, the unicorn. Un- the unicorn. Yeah. But even that, like the most you see is it's slow motion of her hand going up and a little bit of blood. And very stylized, actually, I will yeah. say. That That's moment... why I said it was like my, f- I, I, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. called that one out for a reason. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really cool. The, the editing, the like, the blurriness of like her hand, like mm-hmm. going down in slow mo. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. No, it's, it's kind of beautiful yeah, really it's like very, it's neat it's very effective and it does go down to a lot of people's fears of someone in the house or like you don't, don't yeah. know that and yeah. that's a universal fear all around and i feel like again showing telling the audience right away he's in there and can i just bring up the cop shit now <laughs> well it's, it's gonna come up no matter what because andrew was just like oh my god dumb cops um, i can't do this again i, I want to make you gotta warn me ahead yeah. of time well, if there's i cops. mean it, it, it's true that this 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 movie would not have happened if yeah the, if the cops were could do the their part, job that's the thing <laughs> happens so often sometimes it's so far that it's that it's you know comedic and you can kind of get over it but like sometimes it is just so it is just it it seems lazy it just seems like they're using pol- uh, they're just using cops as an excuse to drive the plot forward and it's fucking lazy because you can have competent cops and still have a fucking horror movie now mm-hmm. i i, I want to make one just one one con- it's not an argument it's just sort of like take this into to into account is that when you have a movie like this where the audience the i think what helps separate between smart cops is dunk and dumb cops is how much does the audience know um, about what's happening in the movie than, say, the cops do. If the cops know more yeah. than the audience does, then the cops are, look, appear smarter. But since we know the killer's upstairs, we know all we the know shit, more, yeah. we know more than the cops, we instantly are screaming in our subconsciously, they're upstairs, they're upstairs, sure, sure. go do it. Mm-hmm. You're, so you're more likely to scrutinize. It's like, uh, it's like have, you know, uh, hindsight's being twenty twenty that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Where it's like, 
yeah, I know more. Like you could have done better, right? Yeah. And and police will make mistakes a hundred percent. I that's realistic. Mm-hmm. What human? I right? yeah. get that. Yeah. However, <laughs> you even separate that, and it's still unbelievable. It's nonsensical. It's really what just doing. one cop though. No, 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 no. Well, the I'll, one cop they intend on being. See bad. that yeah. he's I, talking about more than I that. excuse that cop because he's a caricature. He's fu- that's where I again and they make fun of him again. So yeah. like I, I brought up you, I brought up inside because I think that was the the best example of dumb cops in a horror movie and definitely a because it device. was like it was like yeah. to twenty, but it was so over the top that I enjoyed it. Because I was like, this is so stupid. It's just kind of funny. Mm-hmm. This was not that. They weren't trying. No. They weren't trying to make. They were trying to make the one character stupid. And that was. I actually. I let that. That was funny. I enjoyed that. Mm. But it's the other cops. There's no. Yeah. Like it was. You're saying it just comes done. across as lazy. Are you talking about mostly just the ending? Or are you talking about. No, I'm talking about movie? through the whole thing. What else in the movie um, besides that one cop? Like I didn't see Even John if you Saxon bring it back to stupid. the 70s. Even if you bring it back to policing in the 70s. Like sta- policing standards in the 70s. They're, you know, they're meant to be investigators. They're meant to, to kind of ha- to have an investigative mind in a way. So you typically, at the bare minimum, cops should ask questions. They should wonder. And they should check things out before they go, especially if it's something serious. Like, I understand not taking a uh, claim seriously because you've, like, let's say somebody saying, yeah, calls to the house, right? Um, let's say somebody complained to you about, oh, somebody's making all these calls to the house. You know, that happens all the time. I can yeah. see somebody dismissing that or a police officer dismissing that because, you know, they've heard so many times of people complaining about the same thing. Mm -hmm. But when you know already that it's something serious and you still choose to not do your, to even do your job remotely competently, it does pull you out. It does come across as lazy because it's like, you know, you could still be creative and get, you, you could still be creative and get around that. You don't have to be lazy and just make the cops stupid. I feel like again, I, like I'm having a hard time thinking. Like besides just the obvious one cop, what else? Okay, that's for instance, really dumb? the ending of the film is a good example. But if, if that, if you want to separate from that, I can even go further. Well, I'll bring up the ending because I feel like the ending. They, yeah, like it is a bit of a stretch that they would leave her all alone. I'll give you that. However, yeah, they especially go, if to drag off another character yeah, for shock. How? Well, but again, that's not even just the one thing. Like they, the, if you listen to all the little tiny, yeah. Um, dialogue throughout that whole sequence is that they bring up all the little things to kind of give more reason why they would leave her alone but again it's not like she's left alone and then you see the killer come down he's going to kill her Mm -hmm. it's just kind of leaving like you know you didn't get him he's still there and I, I feel so like you're that, telling me that if you know that a major crime happened in a house that you wouldn't uh, uh, that you oh, wouldn't cert as a police officer or any any competent remotely competent mm-hmm. like not even a good cop just a competent cop like mm-hmm. you know like even a cop who's on suspension could do a would do this mm-hmm. you'd search the fucking house entirely you would check the house you wouldn't just check the room they got like, the guy though they got the, like for a missing the person the killer uh, for sure for missing persons i could see like maybe you just check the room but for like when you know shit is going down and people are it's possible murder you would search the entire but house did, but here's the thing they had no idea that you would get a the warrant house, but, but you would thing, they the didn't house. know that the house was even a place like that needed to be searched because all they were searching for was a missing person yeah. and At all first. the cops were doing no no throughout the whole movie they're searching they have a search party yeah. going on looking for houses actually that whole sequence i'm like yeah but John as soon Saxon as there was a murder everything. in the park you would search and you they, suspect but, but, that but, there's but foul the mur- play but the murder had nothing to house. do with that house it was a different person yeah. who they yeah. found a yeah. body exactly as, so you know that there are murders happening and you have your mate there see here's the but thing why would, but why would they check that well, house like I, like i they said check, when we were watching the movie it's like what if he had an accomplice the police didn't know for sure that but, he was acting but alone but like the audience knows that but they don't know that even even if accomplice aside even if you if you if you if you got rid of that you're telling me that a serial killer but they don't know they have a serial killer they think it's just the one guy yeah but when there's a murder you have to cops are okay so police are supposed to always try to make connections especially with murders which is what john saxon did except he was wrong except he did he made the connection no well you know no no he also made a connection that hey remember when uh right after that they discovered that murder and then they get uh they get to the 
they get to the station and he gets a call and he's like, don't you think that that would be relevant because this somebody was just murdered and this is all and somebody's missing. Mm. He puts it all together. Good job. That's good police work. That's how you should be doing it. But then doesn't fucking check the house. Doesn't uh, he? He suspects that there might be no, foul he, play. No, no, he's going. He yeah, went he to go. No, he went to go check to find the suspect because the one suspect that they were trying to find was the boyfriend. So they thought it was him. And they're Where getting calls. He? They don't know yeah, that the calls where, are coming yeah. from within the house. Yeah, they don't know that at that point. That happens towards the end. I yeah. understand that, but here's the. So why thing. do they search the house at that? point? Yeah, they they have no reason to search the house until they find out that the calls come from the house. Yes, that's the only time. So. The the only time your argument comes in is, is the, the end. ending. Yeah, that's it. That's when they, if any time they were going to search the house, it would have been that moment. That's it. And it's, that I will give yeah. you. But before that, I thought everything was was being handled. If you say it's that one cop was being handled, you know, not enough where I need to scream at the TV. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's it was enough. Yeah. It was fine. Um, I, I could buy it, but... Uh, but I do. I can see the 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 the, the this, um, forgetting the phrase, but uh, it's a bit of a stretch to think they wouldn't search the whole house after finding out that the calls were coming in here. Um, so I'll, I'll give you that little tidbit. However, to just go case closed, guy. But they didn't like, do case closed. Like they're just like uh, they're saying like, hey, she won't wake up. We have someone outside. There's more people. There's people mm-hmm. coming in to inspect the house in an hour. They are all just rushed out because this guy mm-hmm. also had a shock. So they were bringing up, hey, we have people coming in. They're going to inspect the house and all that. You all need, those little you dialogue. Need everybody was to said. leave to bring this guy out. Well, of no, this wasn't everyone leaving. They had media outside. So, yeah, hey, one was handling the reporters. Um, like there was so different there was, things. There was a commotion. All that. everything. Yeah, that was the whole sequence. Let is, me put it this way. When yeah. there's when there's a known when there's a known murder in the house because somebody died in the house, you search the whole house. You mm-hmm. clear Which the they were. house. No, they were going to do that. They, that was stated mm-hmm. um, by. No, the you detectives. right away clear the house. The, why would you wait an hour to clear? Do the you want to know why? Because then you wouldn't have had that cool ass ending. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Ooh, that's my point. Chocolate. That's my point. That's my point. And you know we're kind of getting away from it. That's exactly my point, though. Yeah. I agree. You wouldn't have had that moment without that. Yeah. But you're that. That's my main gripe. People, all like a lot of filmmakers like to use police. They like to make them so stupid and do such nonsensical things just so that they can have those cool moments. That their ineptitude drives and the it plot. Fucking pulls me out of the movie when that shit happens because I'm like, what cop in their right mind mm. would not have done this? Like, you're trying to like argue semantics here, but like, I don't even think it holds up because it is it's something you do when there is a murder or somebody has died in a house. You clear the entire house immediately because that's your job, public safety. You need to you need to keep everybody who's still in that house safe. You need to make sure you do your due diligence, and that's that is basic. That is something mm-hmm. you would learn when you get your badge and your gun. That is something that you should know before you get that. Mm-hmm. So no, it's not like it's not a nitpick. It's base. It's a basic thing that they should have done. Oh, I'm not saying it was a nitpick. So yeah, it's like oh that well that's a stretch, which is you know like it's a cool moment and I enjoy like I still enjoyed the moment. Mm-hmm. But it you, for me personally, it does draw me out of the movie to have uh, to have dumb cops like that, and it does feel a little bit lazy. When mm. filmmakers just decide that's how we're gonna do it. Yeah. No. My my main thing was just I. Uh, that was to me the only time where yeah no that is the stretch. Uh, at that point, I've seen Dunk Cops. Prior to that was where I was more challenging you on. Yeah. It's like I have no idea what you're talking about besides that one cop of showing incompetence in cops until the ending. That <laughs> is where I agree with you. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. They would do this. It's all just to serve the purpose of the movie. I will give you that. That's one hundred percent correct. But prior to that is where I was more challenging on. I was like, I have no idea, as we just debated, well, yeah. why I, I I didn't agree with. It didn't show stupid cops. Okay, fine. Here's another then. one then. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> he got he got the incompetent cop who was funny and I did enjoy. Uh-huh. They got him to call her to tell her to get a don't screw this up. He said. Yeah. So he called. Uh, he he called his on the radio, right? I believe it was on the radio. He called the yeah, the radio to get a hold of him because the other guy couldn't get a hold of. He called the guy in the car first, but on his the throat, radio. but his yeah. throat was slit, so he couldn't get to him. He's like, "What so, the fuck?" So he can only radio to the station at that. point. Radio to the station, and uh, when he was at the station, did you notice that there was another cop right next to him yep. while he was calling? Mm-hmm. Why the fuck wouldn't you ask that cop to call if you think he's gonna fuck it up so much so yep. that you have to warn him not to? 
do not to screw it up when there was another available hey is anybody else at the station that's all you had to ask hey is uh you know davis there I, or whatever right uh, like, and tell him to call and you know why they didn't do it you know why you so that, that they could have, have that line where he says the call's coming from inside the house <laughs> Fuck you! I, I, but here's the thing. I get. But here's the thing, though. At that moment, I kind of. It's the first time where I'm like, I do sort of. Yeah, she. He's desperate at that point because she says, "I have to go get her." Why do yeah. you tell me I was? It's like, no, get the fuck out right now. Yeah, it's a heated um, moment where it's just like anybody. Yeah, who and answers, he told him. And he's he at called, the service Don't desk. panic her. Don't panic her because again, she was this, panicking before. I'm gonna like, give when credit. He says, Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna give credit. That one cop, besides some shortcomings at the ending, that one cop, the the head detective, he was actually doing a pretty good job pretty much the whole yeah. way through. I'll give him actually a lot of credit. You had your one big smart cop, right? Yeah. Except for the fact it is weird that he asked him to do that because he said it. He knows, like most police do, that you don't want to panic her because something bad will probably happen. You need to get her out of the house and not give her that information because you just need her. It's her safety is your priority. You need to get her out and you'll explain later. It's that kind of thing where when people get panicked, they make mistakes. Yeah. And he knows that. But he gives it to the biggest, the most incompetent person. And other the other police officer, if he was not the dumb cop, he would have known that too. Keep her calm. I'll explain as soon as we get there. He'll be there in five minutes, right? He mm. mentioned that. You, you can't excuse the dumb cop. And I don't want to either because he's the dumb cop. He's fine. He's a caricature. But fuck, man, like, why would you even ask him to do it in the first place? And again, it's so you can get that line. So you can get, don't try to uh, be an apologist for it. Like, you're trying to, you're trying to make excuses. No, 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 no. For why these cops are doing these things. Just admit it's so that you can have these moments in the film. I did. I did. Then why are you trying to, uh, uh, then why are you excusing it? No, I'm not not excusing it. I'm more giving just some substance to it. That's it. You're trying to uphold the internal logic of the film. But what Andrew's trying to say is that it still fails. It's exactly. Thank you. Here's uh, here's my thing though about that is that at the same time, you know, there, there's also just taking away from it being a movie too, and the fact is that that guy wouldn't be working there. Exactly. Period. <laughs> if he was even like this movie, he wouldn't be working. You know, unless it was a movie. If this was real life, that guy would not be working there. Because the, clearly, this isn't the first time yeah. he's done dumb shit. That's to, what I'm getting I, from. Actually, it. to be fair, like depends so, depends where you are in. They where, needed that character. Where this de- police department is, because there that are too. a lot of police that get away with being bad cops for a long time. In like take, small towns. The movie does take right? place in the U.S. You saw some American Yes, flags like there, Bedford so. and stuff. Yeah. So, but it's a small town. Yeah. Um, it, I'm going to guess it's small like... Small towns are especially a place where they get away with that. So yeah. like, I'm not going to say that it's even a stretch that a bad cop could be working there. Mm-hmm. That's Again, that's not a sticking point for me, but it's, it's a sticking point when like you're just using it like and that's my main point when you're just using it so it's it's obvious that you're just using it to have payoff like a certain writing payoffs and certain payoffs in terms of the plot like having that line or having that ending mm. and for me personally it's more noticeable as opposed to other people who probably won't notice it as much or as much or care as much but when i see that stuff it's so jarring to me that i notice it right away so it, yeah. everybody's got a different thing that they'll mm-hmm. notice. Oh yeah, and that sure. they'll, that'll pull them out of the movie in a way. And I've found ways to kind of like deal with that. But this one, it just—it's not the worst. But they find they do it. It's obvious, mm-hmm. and I—it's it, it was so obvious that it's a point where I can. It's it's a a, a negative for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I like for me, it just it didn't obviously it didn't bother me. No, as much. no, which is um, fine. Like that's yeah, no, okay. that's fine. I was just yeah. But not... but you trying to like make excuses or try to explain away these things? Don't try to explain away. Just admit <laughs> oh, it. Would... Call it for what it is, Jack. Don't say oh this cop that he could have done this. I think you, there's no, always no, arguments no, for no, that no, kind of no, stuff. It's oh, semantics no, no, no. is pointless. Come on, stop trying to defend. I think it. I think they the, just I, yeah. maybe they just trust them too much. No, I'm not you know? just defending it. That's, I'm again like I agreed with you that again I. I didn't. I couldn't could, because I don't see issues with it. I had a hard time uh, kind of understanding. Besides the ending, what else was there? But you explained yeah. uh, with I uh, could, that one. You know, cop, I could pull which, examples which, here and there. That, Some smaller than others. I'll give you. Oh that, no, and, and that's and that's and that's totally fine. However, for me, it's just like if you're going to spend that much time trying to like, I know, like yeah. you, you want to write smart characters and you want to respect cops and all that. However, with the type of movie you're making, and I'm saying this is an excuse. I'm just saying that. 
as the writer for these movies, you got to prioritize what your focus is on. And if your focus is on making sure that these cops are 100% authentic in every in every way, but it's going to ruin this part of the movie, you have to, again, like we talked about last with Ed Wood, you got to make compromises. You got to mm-hmm. sometimes, yeah, this would never happen, but ever we don't get this. And this is what I really want in the movie. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's why they'll make those decisions. Sure. Um, and yeah, some of them are like, that's but, lazy. But and then what? some of them are like, what else are we going to do? Let yeah, me, and I understand. Let me, yeah. let me say one other thing then. The, why, why feel the need, sure, why feel the need to make cops so stupid on purpose? So that one character that's just the dumb cop, mm-hmm. why do they keep doing that? Comedy, like, it's hilarious. Like, oh, like, you know, uh, uh, Nolan, let's, let's use Bat- let's, uh, Batman Begins. Let's use that one. Um, <laughs> you know, he's flying on rooftops oh. and shit like that. And just yeah. like how every cop except for Gordon... And his crew are like complete shit, and they just all are kind of like they they just sound dumb. Do do do. I just eat donuts. Like you know, <laughs> maybe like, he does. Like fuck, why can't you just leave that shit alone? I don't get why why they if focus it, so heavily on making cops specifically stupid. Well, if it keeps dumb happening. criminals, you no, can no. do dumb but criminals keeps... too, but they don't do it. It feels they like do they dumb don't even, criminals. They don't Have you seen do... Home Alone? But there's a dumb cop in every movie where there's a cop. I yeah. like there's not a dumb criminal in every movie where there's a criminal. What well, the fuck? Well, a cops. I think like in they're history, not really liked. They're not really well liked. No. Ever since all. Chief Wiggum or something, like <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, what no, is like the Chief point? Wiggum. You no, just have no, to Chief, do it. No, Chief Wiggum is a stereotype of that trope. <laughs> yes, of the the dumb cop who eats donuts all the time. That is a cliche since cops began. Yeah, yeah but, but it seemed is, like Hollywood went, "Hey, that's how we should just but, keep doing." But it, that's man. the thing, though, is like you have like if. if the, like there are good good cop movies. Like there are shows and movies that show cops when they're about cops. When yeah, it's but about exactly. Cops, that's but my point. When it's about yeah. cops. That's my point. And whenever yeah. it's not about them, though, it, there's always a. But I will say that it's like somewhere. what Jack was saying. It's because they're not the focus. You're focusing on these other characters. Yeah, but you don't so have do to have it. the dumb cop in there. You could just have a cop. Period. Yeah, but it's a police don't station. Make it funny. It's you police don't station. have to make you have it more than a. Cop. You don't have to always make it funny with the cop. You could do something else. Yeah, you but then it's not as much fun. And that's going back. I actually never mentioned it, but I actually really do like shifting, hopefully, this conversation. I do <laughs> like um, the fact that this movie told isn't just up. a straight up horror movie. And in a lot of ways, there's a lot of comedy thrown uh-huh. in. And apparently that was a lot of Bob Clark, too, because Bob Clark didn't write the script initially, but he went back and he rewrote apparently like half of it mm. and added a lot of the humor. And apparently the writer watched the finished thing and he actually really liked it i mean he liked yeah. all the added humor in and the different things that he added it just adds more layers and depth to the movie it just yeah. gives you something else to kind of you know it adds to the tension the fact that you're laughing nervously every time yes because you still know he's there yeah and, and it that, adds more to the characters it does yep. yeah like like, and, and some great lines you know that little santa i wanted to see more of the guy who played santa oh ho, 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 like i was i was i was laughing hysterically so for me so the one moment uh, that that stuck out to me was that uh, the one cop who just couldn't keep it together oh, laughing yeah. at the fellatio oh, joke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Buchanan. His name is Buchanan. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. His laugh was contagious. Yes. I was, it was awesome. I, was, I just couldn't stop laughing because it was just, it was so good. It's such a Because that's what you do. You'd be like this idiot and you would yeah. just be laughing. Like you, you couldn't hold it. You can't even say a word. You just keep laughing like that. And he just nailed that laugh. Mm. That like yeah. that like this is so stupid I can't even breathe I'm yeah. laughing so hard and he like I was so contagious it's such a great <laughs> comedic moment too because it's like they plant that bomb early on and it's already like oh ha that's kind of funny fellatio but then it like comes back and In it's just like way. you get it it's like <laughs> if they don't say anything you just kind of get it he starts laughing when he like goes to dial and it's like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. right that's so cool how that came back and was even funnier yeah. the second time that right? was a good bit of humor there that yeah. was really good yeah. just yeah and just her uh, margo kidder's little rant about turtles screwing for like three i days. love that too like, that shit was great. that was good yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. just any like yeah it's just it is as ron uh like the it's structured really well yeah it hits those comedic moments when it really hits when it's really good like when uh his search party comes by like, oh, hi, we're yeah. just lock all your doors. Okay. Da-da-da. And those were real yeah, people, man. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I've known some of them. Yeah, so. I was going to oh, say, yeah. are those guys for real? <laughs> oh, like, that, they they're just people like that are real. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much they do. Yeah, because yeah. people will volunteer. And then, of course, if you're in small towns or way out when where people are more gun crazy and stuff, like people will be like, yeah, I'll get the killer. And they'll like yeah. get their shotguns and be like, it's hunting, yeah. right? It's hunting season. 
You know, it's yeah, exactly. crazy. It's well, then, the, and then you got the cops crazy. trespassing on my land. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now there's a moment. <laughs> yeah, that shot him in the ass. I'm like sideways. <laughs> I'm, I'm just yeah, sideways. It was, it was funny. That guy was so funny, but like I was sitting there being like, again, they exist. We, Those we, people, though. We can shoot. Yeah, but does it exist where you can shoot cops and it's like nobody bats an eye? They're like, yeah, haha, funny, uh, and walk away. <laughs> like nobody. But he goes, was trespassing. Hey, you can't Andrew. do that. He was trespassing on his land. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> without without any reason, shoot, you still can't shoot the cop. It is the U.S. I was man. just about to say Go U.S. On. Yeah, you you know you shoot someone. Like he defense, needs a warrant. He, and he should know better. If, he should know better. Like I need a warrant if it's that kind of place where that you actually can shoot somebody as soon as they come like cross your yeah. property line. You would know that, and you would never go undeclared or without a warrant, anyways. Unless so you're a small town cop. Know. Everybody yeah, whatever. I like... mean, they all suck. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Except for cop number one, and even he kind of sucked at the end. So. John Saxton. Oh, John Saxton. John Sax is the sax. You know and what? That's... Best cop in the movie. Sax the one who just laughed because I don't think he actually did any police work the whole time. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he said. Oh, he you're the one, one who he was, was like a secretary. To call? No, 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 he wasn't. Was somebody else. Wait, who? No. Who are you talking Sorry, about? Sorry, the other investigate, the other investigator in the. The one oh, who's the, the, doing the wiretapping. No, 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 no. There was the wiretap, but there was the guy who's laughing. Yeah. Buchan. Oh, he was just there to laugh. You can. Yeah, that was it. Like, I don't yeah. think he did any police work the whole time. He was just. We was doing it off cop. camera. You don't want to see that. <laughs> the movie isn't about cops. You don't want to see him doing. You want to sit down and sit a montage of this guy doing police work and laughing. This, this is what I want in my movie. <laughs> no, I liked it when he like. Andy yeah, Shuck. He was the best cop in the uh, movie, man. I'm gonna. I want to see. I want to see you direct just the police station <laughs> in, in, uh, from this universe. Any? any I just want to see that. But you can't. It's been done well. Like that's. The, but it's always about. He's cops. gonna do police work. Well, I'm it. just saying. Like, fuck it. You know what? Put rescue me, the cat. Put me in charge of the police station. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll make. I'll have it done right. And you know what? You can still have your movie. No, 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 no. Yeah, th- it'll be like an hour of procedural. Any, any movie. <laughs> <laughs> the movie will be like three hours long. Yeah. The whole. Yeah. Yeah. But, any movie we make that has cost, we have to filter it through Andrew first. And he sure, has yep. to be like, dumb, dumb. Good job. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> but I don't know, because I almost, now that it, I know how much of like a big thing it is, I almost just want to keep doing it. You know? I want to make it <laughs> oh, even dumber, should, like a like, challenge. Have you seen uh, Touch of Evil? Oh. <laughs> uh, touch of, no, I haven't. Okay, it is an Orson Welles cop yeah, yeah, movie, yeah. so, you know, he hasn't seen since can. Let's bring it all together. Sure. With cops and Orson Welles. Let's well, there's, I mean, I mean, you know. Oh, and one I, of the best opening sequences ever. Holy ever. fuck. That too. Yeah. I love that scene. But yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a crazy movie. <laughs> Black Christmas. No. Um, crazy movie. Watch it every year. I might watch it again because, you know, it's still a couple weeks away from Christmas. And uh, I guess, yeah. Final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> your final. Oh, your f- other way. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you want Andrew's that, first? Let's start with Andrew. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of time. You want to yeah. see a movie? You want to see a movie with better cops? Just watch Die Hard, a Christmas movie <laughs> with better cops. Just watch Die Hard. Um, the more realistic approach. <laughs> exactly, yeah. more realistic cops in that film. So, um, no, I, you know. <laughs> It is. Yeah, I, I'm. It's kind of just blown out of proportion, but yep. it's like, but it's like, uh, you know, that's just a sticking point for me, in the sense that it, it draws me out of the. The whole point is that it, it drew me out of the movie a tiny bit. Like it, it made me think, oh, okay, I'm watching a movie as opposed to being engaged as engaged with it because it made me question the movie, which is not what you want to be doing. You'd want to sure. be engaged with the movie at all times. So that's why I bring it up as a criticism for me personally. Mm-hmm. However, that aside, I enjoyed a lot of what it was doing. I think it's really original. It, it deserves a lot of credit for that. I, I, I like the characters. There were no really bad characters. Like even the, you know, like even that dumb cop character, like they're all good. They're all well done. They're all fun to watch. So I enjoy all the characters I enjoyed, uh, like, I, I, I did enjoy some of this, the, like, that stylized uh, uh, murder sequence with the unicorn head. I, that was really good. I thought that um, oh, the, the, the killer, I thought that the killer, although I didn't engage with the killer as much as being, I didn't find him as threatening as, as 
like as uh, scary as as you guys did. I still thought he was well done. Um, it's a good movie, and I think that uh, it definitely seems to have gone under the radar because I, I don't know a lot of people that have seen this movie, and I definitely think it's worth seeing, especially because of how much it started, like what, yeah. of, of what it predates. Mm. It's a very interesting movie, so I did like it. I just didn't love... It's not going to be a daily... Or, sure. Sorry, yeah, sorry yeah, rather an annual tradition for me, but I I enjoyed it and I would be willing to watch it again, especially because there's more in there. So I, I agree with uh, with uh, Alex that it would be a good a good movie to watch on your own. Mm-hmm. Well, see, Andrew, I think we should make this an annual tradition. I think we should come back to Black D- Christmas. You mean every Dumb year. Cop Christmas? Dumb Cop Christmas. Do? Oh man, we could bust them all out. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll just pick any movie with cops. Like Police pretty Academy. Much. It's not, that's not about cops. And yeah. perfect. No, I'm well, just gonna marathon. lock myself. Which one in a, do you want? I'm we just gonna lock every year? myself in a room and watch The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> No man, Police Academy. We gotta watch all of them. Well, I'll watch The Wire and like the, the end true, of watch and stuff like that. And that's say, it. Police yeah. Academy is a documentary, right? No, I'm About not the doing police it. force. No. <laughs> they make weird noises and stuff. I got that guy. Oh man, Hollywood. Michael Winslow. Yes. Oh, he's so good. He is so that's good. He's so good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Alex, what uh, what are your final thoughts of this thing? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. L- listening to Jack and Andrew t- argue about <laughs> dumb cops makes me realize that my time would have been better spent watching Turtles. Fuck. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's another movie, and I would direct that one. I, I mean, or you could direct the zebras because they only last thirty seconds. You right? get more takes. That's a short, the short film. Yeah, the short film. Yeah, short film. I liked the movie. I really did. Mm. Thank you for yeah, for no problem. Out this one. Um, is would you consider this movie to be a cult favorite or have a cult following? I was going to get into that. Is that, yeah, I, I okay. would say it definitely has a cult, but my argument is that it should be bigger than that. It mm. should, it has such originality. It pushed so many things that other bigger movies took and ran with and got way more notoriety and stuff. Whereas I think. Yeah, I, I think it shouldn't be just a cult thing. I think it should be a little more of a household. It's it's thing. a cult classic, but it never gets referenced as much as... A, I, I don't notice it no. getting called out or appreciated as much. Yeah. Like, if you read articles, you're never hearing them talk about, like, oh, Black Christmas, like... Exactly. Yeah. originated this or that like it, they never really talk it doesn't seem to come up as much unless you're from what i see unless yeah. you're really unless you're really into, into horror if you're really yeah. into horror then you'll be like oh yeah black christmas you know started a bunch of shit and it's also the by far the best christmas horror movie too and i think it's a bit of that too i think honestly i don't, I don't know if it is this actually but it could be just that it's christmas time and people don't want to watch a lot of you know like horror and stuff that time of year it seems contrasty but that's what i like about it and i think if people are now warming up to die hard quite a bit where they're like yeah that's like a very good christmas movie and they're calling it i, like how it's I think this is the next i think this yeah. is the next one i think this is the next one where it's like christmas yeah i know just, just a setting just because it's horror it's suspenseful doesn't mean that it's not a christmas movie right yeah. and at the end of the day there's there's joy in taking down your killers and uh, well, having dumb cops around so you can do what you want. It's it's the idea that you don't need, you just need the imagery of Christmas for it to be a Christmas movie. You don't need it to be central or a focal point as much. Like I, I know it's in the title, but it was mm. basically just a setting. Yes, in this movie. So like same with Die Hard. So it's I I guess that's that's kind of interesting that it's that way. That if it's just like if the whole movie just plays out during Christmas time, you, that you. It, you know, it could be a Christmas movie. And you've got to have, I think the other thing is you've got to have Christmas music because also both movies yeah, have Christmas totally. music. Yeah. So I think, I think well, that's just, part of uh, the, that's part of the setting though. And the, yeah, you're right. Right. But so. that's another, uh, yeah. another thing, but yeah, definitely the setting is the big totally. check mark. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So we're going to start a petition to get black Christmas on the, on the, the Christmas run with Elf and totally. Home Alone and E.T. Something and yeah. different, like play it late at night, right? showing. Yeah, just make it, make it the late night, you know, uh, yeah. you know, parents, uh, you know, every kids go to bed kind of thing, right? <laughs> that uh, that used to play late at night. That'll be that for, for well, Christmas time. Apparently, they, they tried to actually play it like around prime time. They tried to play it uh, then and it didn't go well because of just well, what the language was. alone. That's the thing. They yeah. were like, yeah, nope. And they pulled it. Uh, so it didn't get a lot of exposure then too, right? So, yeah. But uh, no, it's yeah, very, very underrated in my opinion, even though it does have a cult, you know, following and things like that for people who are into horror. But I think it should be a little more expansive than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely underrated. Definitely a great movie. Definitely yeah. 
Christmas themed. The the one shot that sticks with me right now mm. is the end shot oh, yeah. of the the girl in the window. She's got the plastic yeah. over. When it's I think it's right bef- the shot right before that. So mm-hmm. right before the shot zooms out from the window, it's the shot on her and the way she's looking. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of uh, the the barn stable scene of mm-hmm. when Jesus was born. She, yeah, she looks exactly like Mary does. Mm-hmm. In that one shot. I was going to mention it's a little interesting because the whole idea, I'm pretty sure, is that she's almost like a decoration, right? She's in the window, and from far away, you'd think, oh, it's some doll or something, That's exactly right. And I think that's so cool. It's just like, it's so twisted, but it goes with the fucking, Mm -hmm. you know, time, right? With Christmas and stuff. Um, Yeah, so cool. And yeah, and so it makes sense because, like, you know, Mary, right, you have those little, like, you know, mantelpieces with Jesus and you have like the whole like I, I remember like my mom and stuff used to have that with oh, like yeah. the, the stable and you'd have like, you know, everybody Joseph and Mary and all them yeah. you have little pieces and it's almost like that. It's like, oh here's that piece and then he's got like the lady and it's like, fuck man. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So Jack, so this was what your third, fourth time seeing something it? like that. Something like that. I'm gonna say it's like fourth I've seen it or multiple something. times. Yeah, because so. yeah, yeah. It had been a few years since I've seen it, but uh, no, like a lot of these shots that, that you know I just remembered from watching it or watching other people review this movie, other like horror fanatics or whatever. Um, yeah, no. So this movie has the best cops in the world. Um, oh, that's hands I'm, down. I'm, I'm kidding, Andrew. Um, <laughs> the Wire, what? Yeah, like, <laughs> screw that show. Have but, I um, argued enough already? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, no. I, I, I really do dig this movie. Uh, mm. I, I definitely, you know, will definitely watch this a few times. I, I, I don't. I, I can definitely see this be like a Christmas movie. Like watching yeah. it every year, like. Just something different. It's it's. That's it. I like the thing. Like there's more. Like in terms of Christmas movies, there's almost like a genre within Christmas movies. There's mm-hmm. you know you got your family ones, then you've got your horror ones, and you got your Christmas comedy, you mm-hmm. got your Christmas rom coms. You know, I like that. So if you want to do a, the whole Christmas uh, thing uh, with movies, then mm-hmm. yeah, here's a here's your horror theme. Here's the cream of the crop when it comes to horror Christmas movies because yeah. all the rest are either. Antidog shit. Well, that's what I was gonna say too. Is that it's a great, it's great. You know, I love like you know that it's different and you got that option. The problem is, is that after Black Christmas, it's like a like lot Kr- of the movies are. I, I like Krampus. It was. I good. thought it was pretty good. It was good. Yeah. You it know, was, but was, uh, that's one of the better ones. Yeah. It's like it's like yeah, it's good, but it is very silly. It's you know yada yada. I like how it goes with the traditions and stuff of it's Krampus, cool. but. Yeah. It's like it's good. The only other uh, Christmas uh, like horror theme movie that I can uh, recall again, any sort of like yay yay is uh, uh, what did you write? <laughs> well, don't don't spoil anything. We got the ending. I'll oh. figure it out. We're just figuring out the ending. Oh, okay. Um, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> I guess it uh, but anyways, yeah. No, overall, it's a solid movie, and I enjoy it. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it's no, I, I absolutely love this movie. And just, yeah, it's just like I said, it's, I guess, because also the other thing is there's, yeah, there's Christmas horror movies, but they're just not the same as this. They're so different that this one does stand out like a sore thumb. I would actually remember what I was going to say. Yeah, the only other like horror Christmas movie that I can recall getting any sort of positive feedback was the first Silent Night, Deadly Night. Sure. And, it, and it's that's like. Just... The I mean, that's a one, strong word, yeah. positive. Then, like, yeah, it's like, yeah. And the, like, the second one has garbage day. Which, so. is, I mean, that movie's better. I that's mean, immortalized. That just, yeah. that, I mean, that I'm one's that one's gold right there. But yeah, although I, I did hear the remake, funny enough, of Silent Night, Deadly Night is actually pretty good. Mm. The, the one that came out just a couple years ago. I actually want to see, you know, it's the movie I want to see that. Santa Slay? With uh, Bill Goldberg? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, you know, Santa Slay, that's the one. Making deal with the devil, or yeah. deal, deal with Jesus. Yeah, uh, Satan gets to come back and that's, slay that's goldberg wow. oh yeah goldberg as santa just picture that that's a movie you want to see and it exists and it was filmed in alberta it's great is it just santa santa oh, my God. santa no it's just it's just ridiculous yeah it sounds ridiculous it's uh it's pretty great and uh yeah rylan i guess any final thoughts yeah see black christmas uh the original not the remake yes um 
it's honestly I, I I agree that this like should be regarded as up there with one of the classics because it's so easy to see like where a lot of other uh, movies kind of that are recognized as classics or more recognized as household names mm-hmm. uh, have have clearly drawn inspiration from this movie and also it's better than a lot of the I mean, like I said, I'm not not exactly a horror virtuoso, mm-hmm. but it's it's better than a lot of the stuff from the last. Maybe not like recently, recently because horror yeah. started to make more of a comeback. But American in like, horror, yeah. but in like the previous yeah. like couple, yeah, American horror in the previous uh, couple of decades, though, they, they, this movie is better than pretty much anything that yeah. I can think of that came out in like the '90s or 2000s. Yeah, um, for the most part, just. Yeah, it's got like it's got uh, interesting characters. It's got a somewhat unconventional villain. Um, like I said, the pacing, story structure is really good. The humor um, is excellent. I think my, my my favorite line of the film is when uh, Margot Kidder's character is on the phone with her mom and calls her a gold plated oh. whore, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just in the background. It's like I know, a little, that's a, yeah, it's but it is funny. funny. But yeah. like, yeah, gold plated whore. I like. I wrote that down I, later because I'm like, okay, I, I need to use I that at creative, some point. I love creative insults like that. It's just like, damn, good job. That's original. <laughs> that is an artistic put down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I I really enjoyed this movie, and I don't know, maybe even it could become a holiday staple. Who knows? Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you liked it too because I know obviously you're not like typically a horror person, mm-hmm. so it doesn't it doesn't gravitate to you. And typically, any genre that's like that, it's a little harder to impress. But it, it's kind of like my it's it's it it it's kind of more like up my alley because it has characters that mm-hmm. like that aren't like just disposable. I mean, ultimately they are for story purposes, yeah. but they're not they're not written. Um, as such, they don't waste your whole bunch of time, like I said about with like meaningless setup or like mm-hmm. or like gratuitous violence and yeah. like gore effects. They actually like substituted co- quality and effort for a few like gimmicky entrail effects, which uh, mm. is it's that's takes priority in my book any day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, re- I guess I'd recommend a lot of like. 70s horror in general because i think 70s horror i mean obviously if you're taking out the ones that were pushing the limits like exorcist and stuff like that a lot of 70s horror kind of had that classic thing of just like it was suspense was a big element of it right and it wasn't as reliant on gore yeah i feel like kind of more the just kind of the the overarching overarching uh, atmosphere mm. of the film is is excellent and that's kind of what keeps you keeps you in mm. it I yeah. think that's just um, the whole thing about the 70s building our suspense. That's definitely because all these filmmakers watched Hitchcock growing sure. up. Mm-hmm. And now they're coming into their own. And if you listen to like Spielberg talk about Jaws, oh, we're going to take a Hitchcock approach to this yeah. and all that. So it was very, he was very influential for probably a lot of those movies going forward because that's what they all watch. And he yeah. was the master of suspense. As I just listed, yeah. that this movie is the prototypical example of Hitchcock's use of suspense. The yeah. bomb under the table. You know he's there. And it plays throughout the whole movie. It stretches that band until you can't take it anymore. They really should do that, like more. I I love asides, like where it's just like, oh, so this is happening. You know it. No one else does. Yeah, I love that shit. Well, I feel like that's a mark of the the quality in this movie is because basically mm. we already know everything the characters are trying to figure out, yeah. but at the same time we're invested. We're not just like, oh, come on already, like yeah. figure it out so we can get on with the movie. Yeah, like yeah. it is the movie. Yeah, but you're you're still enjoying it and entertained by it. No, exactly. No, it's it's really, really, really great. Um, but yeah, I guess that was everything. Um, so that was Black Christmas 1974. You know, super sexy. Want more? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, Andrew, I think Andrew has a little outro for us. I just us. wanted to wish good tidings to everybody. So, you know, um, I've been practicing a little bit, and I just wanted you all to, uh, to uh, you know, I might as well just, just uh, start for you guys. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) Have a scary little Christmas.